We've come oh, at baby. oh yeah we oh, pick yes. up right away. There, there. <laughs> oh no, no there oh oh oh, oh baby uh, you are uh, the greatest. Uh, this has got to uh, be the best night of my life. I need more, Larry, more, and something new. Here, slip into these. God, Shamra, is there anything we haven't done? There's lots I haven't done, Laffer. That's why I'm leaving you. Leaving? Now? A night with you gives a woman plenty of time to think. All that New Age philosophy crap just isn't me. What I really love is money. I like how she's still wearing her transparent pants. That's such a nice touch. So long, sucker. Hey, I don't smoke. Oh, baby, you are the lowest. This has got to be the worst night of my life. There was nothing in my wallet. At least things can't get any worse. <laughs> never say that, Larry. I should never say that. Yes. So, welcome. Right after the event of Leisure Suit Larry 6, here we are in Leisure Suit Larry attention, 7. Attention, you in the penthouse. Me? Yes, you, the person who spent the night with Shamra. Leave now. We think there may be a fire somewhere. Can't imagine where. Okay, so right off the bat, now I don't think there is actually a way to die here, and we'll get into the, the nitty gritty later, but we've got to get out of here because Larry's going to die. So it's a really good way to introduce yourself to the interface. So here's your icon, little condom, big condom on something you can interact with. So we can look at things. I really like the interface in Leisure Suit Larry 7. It's so simple and clean. So you just click on it and then all of a sudden there's everything you can do. So no cycling through look and walk and everything. Shamara's vice grips lie on the table, just waiting for another chance at love. Don't even want to know. Let's take that immediately. Now, besides take, there's also this other thing where you can really... It gives you a lot of freedom, uh, especially it's a good way for a lot of secrets and Easter eggs and stuff. So you can do whatever you want to the vice grips. You can do, um, tickle the vice grips. Um, I clicked on the fire and apparently you can just whiz on it. I like how that's an option right away. Ah. Uh, oh. Good thing you wore your industrial strength extra absorbent underwear. Okay, all right, Larry, don't worry. We're gonna get you out of this. We need these vice grips. It's a good thing Shamara used those vice grips last night. I can just reach them from here. All right, so there we go. So we absorb them through our foot into our inventory somehow. La Costellata thoughtfully provides one of these complimentary little hair weave kits in every room. My comb over could use a little thickening. I like how he takes the time to think about this while he's being engulfed in flames. Now, I don't believe there is a way you can die here because this is the game's way of introducing you to the interface and how everything works. So you can take, 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 but if you... Larry, I'm sorry, hang tight, this is important stuff. So if you right click, um, don't hit the boss by the way because it minimizes the game and God, I do not know how to get it back. But the only important thing we need is save and then of course the inventory screen. They are vice grips, and believe you me, the things Shamara did to you with them definitely fall under the heading of vice. Which is confusing because she was a virgin and then was like, I had no time for anything sexual, and then all of a sudden out come the vice grips. I don't buy it. How long were we up here in this room, by the way? Was this like right after our original lovemaking session after we first met? Move your mousey cursor to the upper left corner of the game's graphics area until the menu bar appears. Click on the menu bar and the menu will drop down. Well, I didn't know that. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Swedish Fireman. Um, so actually, as long as we're in here, we can actually we can look at the map. Oh, do, do this is going to be at the ship if we ever get to the ship. All right, so uh, a score audio mixer. Oh, how neat. So we can turn the music down a little bit. Oh, we're going to really concentrate on the fire effects. Wow. What else can we do from here? Walking speed, boss is coming. Increase the filth level. Holy filthy. Decrease filth level. 
not yet implemented. Love it. And you can keep upgrading it forever. Holy, mighty, thoroughly, incredibly, holy, incredibly filthy. Okay, I think I pretty much maxed out the game's filth level because if I go too much further, I'm not going to be able to see the continue button. So we are now thoroughly, incredibly, holy, incredibly, incredibly, holy, mighty, underly, motto, mighty, 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 ultra, universally, thoroughly, thoroughly fully, motto, exceptionally, incredibly, extremely filthy. Phew! All right, so if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna play the game, you know, play the game. So outside, the the Swedish guy has been teaching me. It's like, hey, you gotta open up that hair weave kit in there. And it's like, all right, so we'll do that. To open the hair weave kit. Go to the inventory window by selecting it from the pull down game menu. Then left click on the hair weave kit and select open from its menu. You open the La Castellata complimentary Lil Hair Weave kit and find a needle inside. Thank God this guy knew what was going on in my room, otherwise I'd be really stuck here. And this bra is just not burning. Alright, so here's the trick. So here's how we interact with two items. Because you can't actually pick up items and everything. You can click on it, and then you can look at it. But you can also just, like, use, and then every other thing in your email, your email, your inventory, all appears right here. Which, for right now, is the needle. Crank it open. So now, obviously, just like in any other game, you use a bed needle to unlock whatever. You can't pick it up, but you can look at your handcuffs. In handcuffs, as in life, Shamara spared no expense. There's no way you'll ever break a pair of cuffs manufactured by a company called Sisters of Steel. Mm, now, if only we can get those a Thunderbird, she would have liked us so much more. All right, Larry, hold still. I can't click on them. Thank you. All right, use bent needle. Maybe. Come on, there you go. Out you go. Yes! Yum! Are you crazy? This is the 40th floor! Don't you worry. We've got the net here. Now, what I also admire about this game, uh, amongst a lot, a lot of things, is first of all, the attention to detail here is really nice because you're in Shamra's apartment, there's the aquarium, the fish are all now dead uh, because Shamra has become a very shallow person since we've known her. And then there's the three roses that we saw in the foreground that we paid attention to in the in the last part, which I thought was really adorable. So now we gotta get out. Um, I don't know where this barbell lamp came from. So we gotta break our way through here. Um, this looks great. This chair is a solid heavyweight example of the fine furniture craftsmanship of the Design Guild de Motel Seeks. Ah, uh, I get it. Motel 6. All right, let's... Oh, yeah, we can just throw it. You don't need to take it. Just throw it. Got it. Sorry, Neil. Whoa, God. Okay, okay. We got this. Everything's fine. And... Well done. More kindling. Hotel furniture, Jesse. What it used to be. All right. Uh, turn on... Uh, throw. Larry is 20 pounds, you big baby. You can't lift that, Larry. Just tip it over. It must weigh all of 20 pounds. All right, let's try using the other one, and we'll just try tip. There we go. It's very top-heavy. You can do this, Larry. Nope. I'm determined. I've typed in, like, four verbs into this thing, and nothing works. But I know one that will. Let's lick the lamp. Put that tongue away. I love it. All right. Even though when it finally works, it's really cute. All right. Well, this is what we have to do. Actually, we can use the other right here. We can, well, we can lick the window. Licking is not the answer. <laughs> what is it? Doesn't that depend on the question, smart Alex? Oh, oh, the, the roses have caught fire. All right. We got to get out of here. Let's break the window. Hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very die hard. Hey, what's this? Ow! I hate paper cuts. <laughs> Look at your back. No. no. Ow! I hate paper cuts. Your back and your crack. Hey, Lacasa. Oh. Hey. Oh, there's my oh. beaver. My beaver is okay. here. I'm coming. There's the bar. The pool is now shaped I like a heart for some reason. Myself. Oh. Sure. <laughs> Epic. Oh. Uh. I love the cartoony style. I just adore it. And what I also remember from playing this game when I was younger, is this a Sailor Scout here? Is that Sailor Moon is watching me? Who is this? 
Oh, Larry, Larry, poor innocent Larry. Leisure suit Larry! You just leapt from the 40th floor of a burning <laughs> building! What are you gonna do next? I'm going to... Disneyland. Take a cruise. It says sex on your bottle there. Oh, okay. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Leisure Suit Larry 7. Mark Siebert at the helm with the music as well as Al Lowe, I'm sure, on saxophone. Now, a lot of interesting things about this game I want to point out before we get going. Now, the uh, music and the sound effects and everything, we don't have to worry about Roland or MIDI or anything now. It's a purely digital soundtrack. So the soundtrack is all basically, I, I guess, MP3 or like maybe like a really low quality uh, wave, maybe. But yeah, everything is all digital. So you don't have to worry about the sound quality. It's always going to be a, hey, that's that's Boogle down there. Hey, it's Boogle from Torrin's Passage. You remember, I never noticed him down there before. That's another Allo game that maybe we can play at some point though. It's kind of a, I never really liked it. And why is there a sad Mac up here? Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, what I was gonna mention before is that now that I have a computer that, well, never mind. Oh, nice, uh, all right. Oh. Hello there, boat babes. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Welcome aboard the PMS Bouncy, Laffer. Love it. I'm Captain Thigh. Before this cruise is over, she'll be falling all over me. <laughs> oh, heard that one. Here's your key card, Mr. Laffer. There's been a slight problem with your room. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I kind of expected that. Yeah. Oh, not to worry. I took the liberty of substituting our largest cabin. You'll have plenty of room. <laughs> wow, that's super. Thanks. Now, um, where would my room be? Oh, just check the map. You're in room zero. Anyway, all right, so I remember playing this on a computer well, this was back in like the early Pentium days, I guess. And everything was so slow. Like the pacing in this Your game now is going to be so much faster and like more comedically well timed than what I'm used to. So I'm actually kind of excited. I'm uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this because um, let's say for example that falling out of the 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 roof scene took like four times as long because I had to like figure out Larry and then had to draw each individual one and it was falling was. Anyway, that's it. Um, now I want you guys to pay particular attention to each and every scene because a I mean, innuendos abound, and there's a little... Please don't call this a golden shower. Strange, but now you have to go. Uh-huh. You mean, leave this area? No. Oh. The narrator's also a lot more smarmy in this one, so Neil gets to cut loose a little bit, and then uh, they interact a lot. There is no fourth wall in this entire game, but anyway, I want you to pay particular attention and try to find in each scene, I believe each scene, You'll see uh, a little glint of red and white. Um, you guys remember the Where's Waldo books, don't you? Yeah, baby! Yes! Where's Dildo? Yeah. With the best theme song of any song ever put to pen and paper and in digital format in a raunchy computer video game. With a very nice sort of weird Windows 3.1 box. All right, one of 32. I think I always make it a point to get all 32. I don't think you get a bonus for doing it, but any excuse to hear that theme song more than once. That was my ringtone for a while. So here's a map of the ship. Now, as you can tell, Leisure Suit Larry 7 does not really mess around with the plot a lot. I think they were kind of going for the Leisure Suit Larry, I guess kind of a blend between uh, one and six in a way, where it's just sort of like, all right, Larry, hit the big red reset button. Here you are in this environment, do whatever you want to do, all right? It's entirely up to you. So it's a very open-ended game. It's a lot easier to get around, too. So here's our cabin, and then it's telling there's there's holds over here, aft hold, lower aft hold, uh, the forward hold. We got the ballroom over here. Uh, this, I don't remember. These might be just state rooms we can't get to. So there's where we are here. The sculpture garden, the casino, the employee-only section. Uh, horseshoes competition, the poop deck, library, the purser's desk, which is kind of where we are. Oh, I see, because it's two level. Got it. The heaving hoe, which is the restaurant, the kitchen, the clothing optional pool, 
the Foxel, which I thought they just kind of made up with all those goofy apostrophes in there, but apparently that is a real uh, boat term, and I'll figure out what that was later on. Uh, the Proud Little Seaman Lounge, the Promenade Deck, the Aft Deck, Captain's Quarters, and then the Bridge. So we got a lot to explore. And I believe, it doesn't say it, but they have a, this is a bowling alley back here, which we'll explore a little bit later on as well. And I love the soundtrack of this game too, and we can even like, give props to the piano player too. When Lefty plays piano, it sounds like a jazz combo. He is that good. Can I give him a tip? Tip. Nope. Well, if you can't tip him, lick him. That's what I always say. You want to lick that? Oh, poor Lefty. He never gets any love. I'm a little worried about the charges on my account. Could you check my balance for me? Of course. Wait here. I'll be right back. Oh, well, your computer's right there. Um, okay, well, we can use his phone, apparently, while he's gone. What's this big red button do? Last LND. Last number dialed? This button displays the last number dialed on the telephone's liquid crystal display. Ooh. Push. Good idea. Hell. That will tell you the last number the purser dialed. Not that it Hell? matters. Wow, you must be calling my internet provider. Oh. <laughs> That's 1134, Larry. You're reading it upside down. Oh, yeah, uh, I knew that. See, it doesn't really matter now, but that's kind of cute. Bowling balls may not be removed from the bowling competition area. Now, uh, that's another really nice touch. I think Your account is almost nothing, unless you count the $381 from the bar. What, I've already spent $381? How is that even possible? I just got here. Oh, well, whatever. But anyway, so you get these random little announcements throughout the uh, the entire ship. But if you come down here, it actually has the lady who's saying them. Not necessary, but it's such a nice touch. I love it. May I use your telephone? No. This telephone is for official Perther's desk business only. You must use the telephone on that pole over there. Fine. Okay. See you around. And just what do you mean by that? I never quite figured out. Oh, look, Dildo's back already. That's not even. Your attention, please. There is a meeting starting immediately in the ship's lounge for any and all passengers wishing to spend next week working under the captain. Hmm, that sounds just innuendo y enough for me to want to get in on. And look, come on, Dildo, you're not even trying right now. Yeah, baby. Oh, that never gets old. That might be why I love this game so much. Actually, I don't even think there is a way for you to walk from one part of the ship to the other. You have to use the fast travel map. So let's go on up here. Oh, and there's Peggy. I should explain Cyber Sniff before we get too far along. Dildo, I see you back there. We'll get to you in a second. Now, with Cyber Sniff 2000, uh, they actually gave you this little card, this little scratch and sniff card in the box. Which had, I think, was a nine. It was a three by three square of scratch and stiffies, and it was like smell a vision. Like you would come up here, and if you scratch one, like it told you to, it smells like sea air or like sunscreen or something. I don't have one, but I kind of remember what they smelled like. So as they pop up, I um, I'll probably get some sort of because I had it, I had it, and then there was number nine, which smelled utterly like feces, and like you didn't want to scratch it, but the game told you to, so you had to. Hey, Dilbs. Yeah, baby. And the flavor text in this game is just wonderful. I forgot who who uh who did the writing on this game. Oh right, if you go to the about menu, look who's there. Yeah, baby. Now just on this picture, there are two people I recognize immediately. Now I mean, there's Al Lowe, back when his, he had still a little bit of black left in his beard, and then there's Mark Siebert, who was the sound effects guy for a lot of Sierra games. Assistant designer and writer Don Munsell helped with this a little bit. Let's see, and here's all the customer service. Ooh, they've gone international. Oh, I'm so excited to explore and show you everything. A few chairs there in the back. Oh, never mind. If you're not seated by now, just stand. I'm sure Captain Thigh will be pleased as punch to see such a good turnout this week. And as you all know, each week she runs a little competition for her mail. 
are male-like passengers, which she calls the five-man trophy contest. Isn't that cute? Of course, there's no actual <laughs> trophy involved. No. What you win is better than hardware. One of you will spend next week cruising on the captain. I mean, what <laughs> that is. She'll treat you to a one-week cruise in her cabin where your every need will be met. Uh-huh. By now, each of you has received your personal scorecard listing a random set of events the computer assigned you. Now, don't you worry, okay? No one has to enter every event. There's just too many. Uh, just find the ones listed on your scorecard, enter, and win. The man with the highest total score wins. Are there any questions? Are there any answers? You may begin. I played this hey, game a couple um, of times. I've got a question. Yes, you there in the interesting clothes. <laughs> uh, what's this item listed here on my scorecard? Chastity? It's a joke, sweetheart. Say, what's wrong with you anyway? You're not some sort of government infiltrator, are you? That's ridiculous. Oh, yes? I am going to keep my eye on you, sweetheart. It's not my fault you can't make a joke. Yeah? You'll find out when we're finally in charge. Then you'll be the one singing a chast titty tune. That's it. I'm leaving now. Everyone else is already gone. So they have. Very well dismissed. Hmm. He's a strange one. No. Your attention, please. Steve is the proud winner of the nude Scrabble competition. We just started. How are people winning the competitions already? So he's got this weird conspiracy theory going... Larry, you are right there, baby. I like your moves. Hello, look, there he is. You didn't even see him until now. Hey, buddy. Yeah, baby. So he's got some weird kind of conspiracy theorist thing going on, but I can't remember what it's all about or actually even if it matters or means anything. So here he goes. Here's our card. Oh, what is all this stuff? A uh, cabin key card. Your key card has an all-important magnetic stripe on the back, so it may be used for shipboard purchases and even to unlock your cabin door. Whoa. And that must be my ship map, not a big deal. Here's what does matter. Oh my, okay, well we know exactly what this uh, competition's gonna be all about. Okay, so the Thighs Man Trophy Award, this being Captain Thigh and uh, her, um, this being a, a joke of the Thighsman Trophy, which is, I thought was, it is kinda, kinda cute. So, Essentially, yeah, so you win all these events. If you come in first, you get like the highest amount of points in each one, then yeah, you, as the picture implies, you get to bone the, the captain. This seems kind of like prostitution, but whatever, works for me. All right, so we got Poop Deck Horseshoes, the Craps Tournament, I don't know how to play craps at all. Uh, Tail Deck Bowling, the Love Master 2000, whatever that is. Uh, the Cook Off, that's a really cool little event. I like that, and Best Dressed Man. You can click on these. What do these, what do they do? Do they give you a description? Oh, it takes you right there. Well, that's, um, it's actually surprisingly handy. Unexpected, but handy. What is this guy? Are you, are you the judge? There must be some reason for that mannequin to be located where it is and in that position. Yeah, and for that considerable bulge inside his fly. Uh, oh, I like how they put little posters of Captain Thigh all over the place to keep you interested and entertained. And I, I really feel like I'm going to get transported somewhere, like into another world of some sort. Scanning platform. At, oh, wait, before, whoop, there he is. Hello. Yeah, baby. This is really why you bought this game, isn't it? What, to feel up androids? Damn straight it was. All right, so Mannequin's Fly is its own thing, so of course, you know what we gotta do. Let's have to go rooting around. The zipper on that Mannequin's Fly appears to be operational. Let's just see what this guy's got. Mmm, what a place to hide a card reader. <laughs> All right, Larry, let's show him what we got. Best dress competition, let's go. It's me! Whoa! I'm concerned about privacy. Here. Your score is two. Two out of what? Five? Three? What? That's probably out of a hundred. I think it's pretty stylish. Let's take a look at my card. Oh, okay. So the more punches you have, the higher your score. So I can go from here all the way to there. So I 
I've only scored one. Now, the good thing about this, what, and they, they gave it some thought, is because if you try it and fail, it's not like you did it once, and you can, you can try it as many times as you want. So if you come back with better clothes, you can redo it, and then it'll, it'll give you more punches, you know, re, re, depending on how well. Sure. Your attention, please. Mark has just finished with a record high score in the nude curling competition. I have got a lot of work to do. People are winning competitions left and right. Let's go. So one of the great things, I got to get rid of this beeping. There we go. Um, uh, hey, there he is. Hey, Dildo. Yeah, baby. What I do like about this game is that they do give you a, a real, some, something to work towards. You have a reason to be doing what you're doing. Unlike in Leisure Suit Larry 6, we're just kind of bumbling from one thing to the next, and then all, all the pieces just kind of fall into place at the end. You guess? It's, it's really kind of dumb. But this being the first part, let's really show off everything, so just so we, so we can kind of get our bearings. So here's the kitchen, all this stuff you can look at, and all has flavor text, and this looks, that's just a plate full of dicks. But if we go through here, here's the kitchen. It lets us wander around in there. Mm, I don't remember what seven was supposed to smell like. I bet you there's a website somewhere that uh, that kind of lists what all the smells were. Oh, <gasps> I remember you. That's yeah, Cookie Puss. It's Cookie Puss. Cookie Puss was a Carvel ice cream cake. And because of this, I mean this right here, I mean literally in this game of Cookie Puss, it has been my dream to have a cookie puss cake at one of my birthdays or give it to my brother for his birthday because whenever something is delicious, we always say the same thing. Mmm, cookie puss. Yes, that is, it, that is it. That is one of the lines that has shaped my adolescence. Oh, cookie puss, can we eat you? Hmm, that's not bad. Considering it's been sitting out unrefrigerated for days. Oh, delicious. Can I take it? You don't need that. Damn. All right. Well, all right. Hey, Dildy. Yeah, baby. And in classic Sierra click and point adventure game fashion, take everything that's not nailed down, including this magazine wrapped fish. It's a fish wrapped in an old issue of professional hash slinger magazine. Oh, good. My subscription just ran out. You were a hash slinger back in your day? Is that like some sort of drug reference? Or like corned beef hash? That fish has gone bad. How can you tell? Oh, the little things. The earring, the tattoo, the surly expression. Say, how about if I toss the fish and keep the magazine it's wrapped in? It's stanky. That's good. Another thing I appreciate is how you're able to walk around while the narration is going on. So it just gives it more of like a seamless, almost like cinematic feel. I like it. If I look at that, will we sing fish heads? Apparently these fish were on the wrong side in the seafood revolution. If I look at that and I do sing, will we sing the song? Damn. Nice pot. Reminds me of my college days. The judge gave me six months probation. What, for bad cooking? Yep, put it right in your pants. Ooh, a salt shaker. This shaker contains only genuine sea salt. Scraped from the hull of the ship before it's annual hosing down. That's good recycling. I appreciate their acumen. I'll take that. Pass the salt. That's not funny. Okay, you try making the jokes all the time. Hmm, touche. The gauntlet's been thrown, Lair. Uh, oh, is this the Caviar Machine? What is this? The Caviar Master 2000. Oh, do I want to? Yes. Ew. Ew. So gross. The Caviar Master 2000 is for those who like their eggs fishy yet fresh. Oh no, not. No, not Fifi. Now I am curious about your attention, please. Uh, I'm curious about this one because, I mean, Fifi is like a normal, like, you know, people always call their poodles Fifi. So they're like, oh, no, not Fifi the poodle. But it was also a character in the, uh, one of my least favorite Sierra games in the world, King's Quest Seven, is Fifi Le Yip Yap, who was the, the mayor or the governor or whatever of uh, Falderall. And nobody liked him. So here he is. I, I imagine that this is our Fifi. Uh, I wonder if I can talk to him. Anything to say? Stop chinning, start winning. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna start using that from now on. 
You want to lick that? Yes, I want to savor in the death of that dog in every means possible. Well, not every means possible. Can I use the guillotine? Some chefs aren't comfortable cooking without the traditional French tools. The Cyber Cheese 2000. Just add ingredients and step way back. All right, so I guess that's a hint. I'll probably have to be making cheese at some point because this looks very much separated from the rest of the game. This is not the background. And, oh God, everything in here just makes me want to vomit. Let's get out of here. So if we poke around a little bit more, let's go take a visit to the library. Let's just show off everything because there's a lot of characters that we have to meet. Uh oh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I see you down there, Dildy, but hang on one sec. I saw you up there. Yeah, baby. All right, now that we're here, there you go. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Love it. Now, there is an Easter egg involving this beaver at some point. I think I kind of remember what to do with it. We asked our loyal Leisure Suit Larry fans what they most wanted to see in the next Larry game. And here it is. Like one of these books meant something? I might be wrong. Hmm, what's this? Oh, a book on that great aircraft manufacturer. Fucker, more than just an airplane. By someone named Drew Barrymore, whoever he is. I wonder if I just kind of lucked into that. Uh, can I take it? Hmm, I think I'll scan a little of this first to see if it's something I want to read in depth. Anton Hermann Gerard Fokker was born in 1890 in Java. At an early age, he began an airplane manufacturing business in Germany. During World War I, his factories produced triplanes and biplanes. He revolutionized aerial warfare in 1915 by mounting a machine gun on the front of an airplane, then synchronized the gun so it would fire through the blades of the plane's propeller instead of shooting them off. After the war, he turned to developing commercial aircraft. In 1922, he moved to the United States, where he died. Died in 1939. <sighs> hmm. Oh, I don't think so. All right, but that knowledge. Tonight, a spectacular display of audio animatronics in the proud little seaman lounge. Don't miss your chance to see great moments with Mr. Clinton in the lounge nightly. Are you joking me? Is there an animatronic Bill Clinton playing saxophone in the lounge? Oh, we've got to see that. Is that there right now? Well, let's go introduce ourselves to the ship's librarian. Hello. Excuse me, miss. Um, that's Ms. Victorian Principles. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Oh, I so love dual first names. One cruise I met Boutros Boutros Guy. Now, I would also like to point out before we go too much further in my own defense, um, whenever we were doing the first, what, five games that was not voiced, I would always say, my name is Larry, <laughs> Larry Laffer. And then in Leisure Suit Larry 6, he would always say, Larry, Larry Laffer, huh, and then put the laugh in there. But in Leisure Suit Larry 7, that's the way he says it. And that's what I was basing it off of. So BAM in your face, people who said I was doing it wrong. I'm a mature adult. Are you the ship's librarian? Yes, I am. Do you see something you'd like to check out? Don't, don't tempt me. Oh, I'm sure you have something I could explore <laughs> in depth. All righty. What is your cabin number? Whoa, babe, slow down. Jeez, and women say I'm fast. Fast? Uh, well, sir, we check out books by cabin number here. Oh. Zero. Zero? <laughs> Tight budget? No, you see, uh, you don't want to know. Correct. <laughs> I don't, the, the jokes in this game are so much better. There's also an option if anyone in my audience out there is sort of of the seasick nature. This can be turned off, this sort of boat swaying thing, um, by going to the ship stabilizer. And it'll, it'll turn that off, which is nice. But it adds a little bit of extra, I don't know, realism, I suppose. But if I stare at it, it does make me a little nauseous. Tickle your ass with a feather? Wait a minute, what? <gasps> Did you say? I said, particularly nasty weather. 
No, oh. look outside. It's actually very nice. Really? Yeah. So, uh, you got any good books? Oh, many kinds. Unfortunately, you're a little late. All the really good ones are already gone. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. What? How's your book? Oh, quite uplifting. I so enjoy books affirming sound moral principles. Don't you? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do, but, uh, don't you ever read anything spicier? Oh, no. Those books don't appeal to me. All that panting and groping, that raw animal passion, that... I'm well, sensing repression. It just encourages the wrong sort of thoughts. No, no, I only expose myself to great literature. I wish I was some great literature. Oh, you took my yeah, joke, great Larry. Literature. Yeah. This game's so well written. I love it. So, what was she reading? Prudish and proud. Prudish and proud. Yes, this gal brings new meaning to the word uptight. Hey. Huh? Huh. Yeah. Isn't that two words? All right. She's a tight ass. Okay. Uh. All right. I'll let you get away with that one. But um. What do you do for entertainment? Well, I start at one end of the bookcase and read my way through to the other. Unfortunately, I'm now on my third pass through most of them. Now, keep uh, just keep memorizing or just keep in mind what her answers to these questions because we'll talk to her again in an altered state of mind and everything she says is going to be sort of the polar opposite of what... And I'm just getting ahead of myself. I know this game so well. Cruise ship life looks like an endless vacation. Don't you just love it? Sure, it's perfect. If perfect means knowing that every day you're going to have exactly the same food you had that day last week, it's perfect. But all the fun, the nightlife, the non-stop partying. Oh, well, not for us crew members. For us, it's more like never being able to leave the office. <laughs> wow, I never really thought of it like that before. It seems like whenever you go to a cruise ship, like the, the crew works hard, but you figure they, they party it up because there's all this alcohol and food on board. But yeah, I guess you're right. It's like you're really stuck there. If you don't like it on your office, tough. You're you're. Ooh. Wow, that was that was dark. Nine four five point three. Four seven one point two four. Oh, what are you doing? What do you think? Whispering Dewey decimal numbers to you. Turn ya on, huh? Uh, hardly. <laughs> I've filed them all. Do they still use the Dewey Decimal System? Is that a thing? I mean, they must like in larger libraries, like the Library of Congress. I wonder if it's still active. All right. Did I mention my name is Larry? Now would you like to have sex? Wow. You're disgusting. You You'll never get anywhere with me, you pathetic loser. Well, you kind of blew everything. Now she really hates you, but I don't think... There's not like a morality system where I gauge how much she likes you. There's either an on or an off. And right now she is off. How about me whispering a few Dewey Decimal numbers? You already did that. Victoria. Stop that, Larry. Don't... As if I haven't heard that line before. Zing. Men, you're all alike. New glasses. Poke, poke, poke. What about these? What about... Oh, I see. You click on that now. It's set. Now you can reference the pile of books here. Oh, those? Those are already checked out. To me. That's a lot of reading for one cruise. Not for me. I'll finish those tonight. In bed. Hello. Oh, all right. Let's keep this going. Would you like to know what I plan to do tonight um, in bed? I'll vote sleep. Zing. See, the conversation system, fairly short, sweet. Once you clicked on it, it toes yellow, so you know you don't have to talk about it again. It's like, you don't... It's just, it's it's so, it's great. It's great. I love this game. And then, let's see. What do you want to discuss with the Victorian principles? Uh, let's see. Let's discuss... Pride and Prejudice. Just a moment. Let me look that up for you. What, you don't know Pride and Prejudice? Something, something, something! Live on the road on deck! It's the bump, 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 driving me! What? Tracks! See a guy and electrofuel twisted! No, I'm sorry. That book is checked out. I've never heard that one before. It's like, while, while she has her back turned, you can rob her blind, but... 
I have never heard that one before. Something about monster trucks? All right, well, bye for now. Well, nice talking to you, Victorian. Perhaps I'll stop by later. Alrighty then. Good day. So as you may be noticing, Leisure Suit Larry 7 is a big game with a lot of writing, a lot of things to look at, and a lot of characters. So this will probably be the longest one of ever, but I think we got ourselves a pretty good start. So we know what's going on, we know the plot, we know our way around, we've got our map, we have our ticket, we've got everything. We have everything except for time. I'm out of that. So we'll pick this up next time, and for now, as always, a good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.